Chiripiketi. An unknown world hidden deep within Colombia's Amazon. Prehistoric towers, waterfalls, and deep canyons lie surrounded by rivers, lakes, and rainforests bursting with life. Scientists have only guessed at what else lies beneath this impenetrable, pristine jungle. Until now. Biologist Blanca Huertes and nature photographer Francisco Ferreira head deep into the heart of nowhere. For two days, Chiripiketi becomes their temporary home. And in their search for new animal species and evidence of ancient people, they face incredible highs, along with a few unexpected lows. rainforest on Earth. Situated in South America, it covers approximately 7 million square kilometers. If the Amazon were a country, it would rank ninth largest on the planet. These jungles are so fertile, they support over 10% of the species currently known to science. However, this could be just the tip of the iceberg. Many parts of the Amazon remain a mystery, and possibly the least explored are the isolated mountains of Chiribiketi, deep in the beating heart of Colombia. For the first time in over a decade, scientists have been granted limited access to one of the most remote and pristine regions in the world. Dr. Blanca Huertas of the Natural History Museum in England has been given a 48-hour window to establish the health of Chiripiketi's ecosystem. Known as rapid assessments, these brief scientific expeditions are designed to collect as much data as possible while causing near-zero impact on the environment. Blanca's specialist area is butterflies and moths. These diverse groups of flying insects are key indicators of a healthy environment and play a crucial part in the food chain of much larger animals. Not only are they relatively easy to spot and capture, they're virtually guaranteed to be here. Worldwide, more than 250,000 species of butterflies and moths have been documented. Within minutes of landing, Blanca is forced into action. Her rucksack has attracted the attention of one of the very creatures she's looking for. It's a very beautiful one. Really, really strong flyers. Joining Blanca on her whistle-stop mission is award-winning nature photographer Francisco Ferrero. Colombian-born, Francisco has been photographing the spectacular geology of the Chiribiketi region for the past 15 years, and this is the first time he's been granted permission to set foot on land. Fascinated by these mysterious mountains for almost his entire life, He's on a mission to locate some of the earliest forms of art known to man. 
70 years ago, a one-off expedition to this very region reported sightings of 10,000-year-old cave paintings by the Cariona, an ancient Amazonian tribe. With no photographs to help pinpoint their location, he's relying on a set of vague map coordinates and expert guide, Thomas Doyer, to try and find the site. As you can see, it's very rocky. So right, so I'd go up and down. That's at least a day. At, at least a day, yeah. Okay. But locating the paintings could be the least of the team's problems. Although they've chosen the top of a mountain to base their mission, these elevated plateaus, known as tepuis, suffer their own unique climate. While the base of the mountain remains warm and humid, the top is much cooler with frequent rainfall. As the team are about to find out. This could spell disaster. Blanca's butterflies won't fly in the rain, making them almost impossible to catch. And constant low cloud cover would end Francisco's dreams of locating the ancient art. While life for the team comes to a standstill 500 meters up, at ground level, it's normal service for one of the Amazon's largest predators. to almost two meters in length. And weighing over 150 kilos, the jaguar sits at the top of the jungle's food chain. Being a solitary animal, it lives and hunts alone, apart from the odd brief encounter during mating season. Resembling wild pigs in behavior and appearance, peccaries never stray too far from water. Snuffling out anything edible, they can weigh up to 40 kilos and often form herds of up to 100 individuals. the jaguar, these medium-sized mammals provide an easy meal, especially in such large numbers. This female singles out her target. She edges closer, desperate to avoid being spotted. As soon as within striking range, she breaks cover. One bite, 
is all it takes. The Jaguar's powerful jaws and extended canine teeth ensure the victim is killed almost instantly. No other big cat uses this skull-piercing method of dispatching its prey. Back at camp, it's good news. Yesterday's rainstorm has blown over, so Blanca gets to work setting up her butterfly traps. Because butterflies have a sweet tooth and are drawn to nectar, a mix of sugar and ripened banana is used to attract them. After entering through the gaps in the bottom, the butterflies attempt to fly up through the top of the net, but this upper section is sealed, preventing their escape. Now, it's just a waiting game. Ninety percent of all species on Earth are insects. Yet while the majority, such as butterflies, play a crucial role through pollination, others can have a more destructive effect. Despite their diminutive size, army ants are responsible for more deaths in the Amazon rainforest than any other creature. This colony may contain more than a million individuals and a new generation of ant larvae deep inside this temporary nest are in need of food. Scouts are first to fan out across the forest floor. Laying down pheromones for the rest to follow. Worker ants link to form living bridges wherever there are gaps in the trail. Giant soldiers guard the hunting highway. These powerful pincers are used for fighting, not foraging. As the colony sweeps across the forest floor, the casualties begin to stack up. Powerful stings subdue their prey. Before being dismembered, and carried back to the nest to feed their young. A single swarm can kill up to 30,000 victims a day. The army ants don't have it all their own way. Many insects attempting to flee the onslaught fall victim to another predator. Ant birds spend their lives tracking these marching colonies. By waiting ahead of the advancing swarm, these feathery freeloaders pick off any creatures attempting to flee, hijacking the spoils of the hunt Many of those already immobilized are also snatched from the mass of miniature jaws. It's thought that at least 10 species of ant bird rely heavily on the swarms for survival. And this remarkable chain of dependency doesn't end there. Scientists have recorded at least one species of butterfly feeding on ant bird droppings. 
a fairly predictable food source wherever army ants are found. High above the forest floor, one creature has chosen a unique way to avoid most ground-dwelling predators. The sloth moth spends almost its entire life living among the coarse fur of its tree-dwelling host. There can be over a hundred taking refuge on a single animal. Nutrient-rich algae growing on the sloth's outer coat provides the moths with a constant supply of food. It also offers a degree of camouflage, which ultimately benefits both creatures. Because their main food source is found in the forest canopy, sloths rarely venture down to the ground. Leaves aren't easy to digest, so sloths have developed large, slow-acting stomachs to break down their tough cellulose diet. This digestive process can take more than a month to complete. Even a visit to the bathroom happens in slow motion. Just once a week, sloths and their freeloading passengers descend to the forest floor. It's not entirely clear why they choose to defecate directly on the ground. Some scientists speculate they're trying to avoid detection through the sound of dung landing from a height. Business begins. And once done, the female moths jump ship. For a brief moment, they leave their host, depositing eggs in the freshly laid dung. Soon, new larvae will hatch and feed before they eventually pupate. They'll then fly up to the canopy to reside in a sloth moth home of their own. As dusk draws in, Blanca's mountaintop mission to find new species continues. Moths are positively phototactic, meaning they're drawn towards light. Setting up the contraption is tricky, so the rest of the team lend a hand. By shining a bright bulb onto a light-colored sheet, any insects within a 50-meter radius should be lured in. Well, at least that's the plan. If successful, this will be the first ever moth survey in the Chiribiketi region. But Blanca's a little concerned about the conditions. At the moment, it's OK. It's a bit windy and it's a bit cold. <laughs> but at least there's no bright moon to distract them. At last, they have their first visitor. That was a beautiful one. This is a very interesting one also. Before too long, they're inundated. But identifying them won't be easy. We don't have any field guides or illustrated guides or books. People don't know much more than. Many of these specimens appear to be brand new species, but Blanca won't know for sure until they're studied back home in the lab. Although they live for just a few days, only one sample from each new variety is collected.
As a successful night for Blanca draws to a close, Francisco just has to hope the weather remains fine for his mission, to find the cave paintings tomorrow morning. While early morning mist covers the forest canopy below, on top of the tepui, conditions are perfect for Blanca to check her traps. Field guide Thomas Doyer is intrigued by what she might find. Very sunny, so they're very active. Well, along with some flies and moths also. <laughs> That's a very nice one. It's a lovely Memphis. Okay. Is it the one with the blue? Yeah, it's a, it's a very beautiful one. Lots of species, hundreds of species across South America. Yes. So, but very poorly studied. Nobody has done a review on this genus. They attract to the juices in the fruit. Sweet butterflies. <laughs> With the captives contained, Thomas decides to have a go at catching the more traditional way. <laughs> it proves far harder than it looks. Go fast, huh? I told you. <laughs> That butterfly we, we found on the net is a really fast flyer. So if, if it was not on the net, it's very, it hard, on the trap then. very hard to find it. Really strong butterflies you found in this area. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> wow. I call brush foot butterflies. With beautiful green eyes. <laughs> How long does these the butterfly live normally? Yeah, usually they last for a couple of weeks maximum. A couple of weeks? Yeah, maximum. Despite their short lifespan, once preserved, these specimens will provide Blanca with unique data on the Chiribigeti region for many years. Blanca continues her quest for butterflies. Francisco and Thomas head off in search of the ancient rock paintings on a neighboring tepui. They're relying on rough details from a single sighting almost 70 years ago. According to their maps, Francisco believes the works of art should be reachable by foot. However, Thomas knows the Amazon terrain can be challenging to say the least. What appears to be a three-hour stroll on paper often turns out to be a three-day trek through impassable jungle. Less than an hour in, Thomas has some bad news. Okay. Find our way? Yes. But it's all getting to the same canyon. OK, so how far? Crossing, it's impossible. I, I guess it's way too far to get there. Reaching the paintings in the short window they have now seems unlikely. However, Francisco hasn't completely given up hope. You know, what we can do tomorrow is just go around the helicopter yeah. and look yeah. for, the, for the big for the paintings. Yeah. For the paintings. Despite the setback, Thomas thinks they should continue to the very edge of the tepui, where they're guaranteed some spectacular views. This is the tepui where Blanca's working, so the jack horse must be the, the other one. one. The yeah. one to the right. Yeah. We can cut our way here and 
we have a beautiful view. Okay. Over the rocks over there and some rocky and parts. And that's the closest you, we can be. At this moment, I guess, yeah. Okay. So sure, let's do that. Yeah, we go yeah. there. Okay, sure. Perfect. Of the 400 or so species of mammal found throughout the Amazon, around half reside in Colombia's tropical rainforests. The bird life here is even more prolific. Over 750 species have been documented, including one that chooses dance rather than song to obtain a mate. This female wire-tailed mannequin has entered the realm of a potential partner. The male's striking plumage may be enough to impress among other species, but mannequin females play very hard to get. Suddenly, another male arrives, and it's time for the show to begin. The males work as a team, often coordinating their moves to achieve a common goal. Cooperative behavior to attract a mate without direct competition is rare among the animal kingdom. As many as 12 males have been seen to share a dancing territory, also known as a lek. Impressed, the female chooses a partner. For now, at least. Wire-tailed mannequin females are known to have multiple mates. For the dancer left behind, it's just a matter of time before she returns. The Amazon is home to the largest river basin in the world. More than 15,000 tributaries crisscross an area in excess of 7 million square kilometers. Chiribiketi is thought to contain the most complex network of rivers in the entire Amazon. And one creature has dominated these waterways since the days of the dinosaurs. Spectacled caiman get their name from the spectacle-like bony ridge between their eyes. They can reach up to three meters in length and are able to tolerate salt as well as fresh water. This adaptability has made them the most common crocodilian on the planet. It's been estimated that over a million survive in the wild, and this number keeps on growing. This female has been on guard duty for the past three months. Chirps from deep beneath the leaf litter inform her the waiting is almost over. Cayman nests can contain as many as 40 eggs.
Instinct draws the hatchlings to the safety of the river. Although they can already hunt by themselves, their mother will continue to protect them for the next four months. Fish make up a major part of the Cayman's diet. More than 3,000 species are found in the Amazon's waters. They also fuel one of the rarest and most endangered creatures in the world. Pink river dolphins are unique in that they have a flexible neck allowing them to move their heads from side to side. This adaptation enables them to navigate the submerged branches of Chirpichetti's flooded forest, their preferred hunting ground. Because their vision is so poor, the dolphins rely on an internal sonar system. Not only does this aid maneuver, it also helps them locate fast-moving prey. Ancient tribes regarded the pink dolphin as sacred, having magical powers. Even today, in many regions, they are still revered. Back above the canopy, Francisco and Thomas finally reach the edge of the Tepui. Wow, look at that. Perfect view. Great. Let's get some pictures. Over a hundred Tepuis lie scattered throughout the Chiribaketi region, the largest concentration in Colombia. Although Francisco has studied the region for many years, it's the first time Thomas has ventured into this unique environment. This is probably one of the most virgin parts of the whole planet. This is very interesting in terms of geology and in terms of how pristine it is. It's really amazing. All these rocks, probably more than 2,000 million years old. Part of the Guyana Shield, Chiribaketi once sat at the bottom of a shallow sea. Over millions of years, uniform layers of quartz sand were continually laid down. Through pressure, this sand recrystallized, forming quartzite, one of the oldest and hardest rocks on the planet. Eventually, the plateau was raised above sea level. Now released of various pressures, the rock mass expanded, causing the formation of vertical cracks. Rain soaking into these uniform fissures caused them to spread, and blocks of sandstone began falling away. Rivers added to this erosion and carved large canyons, leaving behind numerous islands, or tepuis, as they're known today. For thousands of years, the Tepuis of Chiribaketi have been a sacred place. 
ancient Cariona people made pilgrimages to these mountains. And it's here they left their mark. This is the heart of the Amazon painting and it's probably the largest painting site in the Amazon. This is the 16th Chapelle of the Amazon. But locating the artwork is a bit like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Although Francisco's mission to find and photograph the paintings has failed, there's still a slim chance of spotting them from the air when the team leave for home. Tomorrow morning, he just has to hope for good weather, a keen helicopter pilot, and also pray that his age-old map coordinates are accurate. It's the team's final morning on top of the Tepui. Their 48-hour mission is almost over, so Blanca checks the last of her traps. Decanting the butterflies can be tricky, so she calls on field assistant Arturo Vargas to lend a hand, especially as Blanca has some unwanted captives too. Other insects, including bees, are also attracted to the bait. Yep. Shh. Ah, sorry. Oof. That's gonna hurt a lot. That's problem with bees and traps. <laughs> Back at camp, Francisco and Thomas explore their last chance of finding the ancient cave paintings, this time from the air. Take the helicopter and go around this area and see if we are able to spot the painting. Locating them is one thing. Getting a clear view to photograph is another. Despite Francisco's mission not quite going to plan, Blanca couldn't have hoped for better success. How did it go? Pretty good. We got a lot of butterflies. We got a very interesting one. Can you open that for me, please? We got a very, very interesting one. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is that's called Adelpha. It's very beautiful. Wow. Wow. Look at these plants. Maybe a new subspecies or something. I'm not aware of any collector in this area. I don't remember to see any record from the top of these mountains. So it's, it's a new record, at least geographically. In just 48 hours, Blanca has managed to collect and preserve more than 100 specimens. That was a moth collecting from yesterday. Let me see. Oh, that's fantastic. It should be called the love moth. Look at that. It has hearts and the wings. <laughs> Can you see it? It's pinkish. Yeah, it's beautiful. Very yeah. cute. <laughs> In an area like this, which has never been studied on the moths, uh, I reckon at least one quarter of those moths might be new for science. So we got a very good sample to take back in the lab. Unlike moths, which need to be pinned to protect their wings, the butterfly samples are stored another way. I'm going to show you the butterflies, Francisco. I'm not pinning them. They, sh they should be all right in here because the upper side is protected when they close the wings. Moths don't do that. We have found about 25 species of butterflies here. This is just a small sample of what we could expect in a place like this. Cool. Brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go to that envelope very soon. <laughs> Blanca predicts almost a quarter of the moths she's collected are brand new to science, and at least one butterfly too. If this turns out to be the case, it will justify a much larger expedition to the Chiribiketi region at a later date.
The team's ride home is almost ready to leave. But for Francisco, the mission isn't over just yet. He's convinced the ancient cave paintings lie just the other side of the neighboring Tepui. So he's persuaded the helicopter pilot to make a minor detour on their way back to civilization, 150 kilometers away. With limited fuel reserves, the pilot can't afford to deviate for too long. But just as they make their final loop of the Tepui base, something catches Francisco's eye. It's the paintings. Finally, Francisco is able to capture the very first images of the tribal artwork referenced more than 70 years ago. These paintings and drawings are all that's left of the ancient people that once called Chiribaghetti home. For Francisco and the team, it's mission accomplished. <laughs> Chiribaghetti is one of nature's final frontiers. For thousands of years, creatures have dominated this pristine wilderness, many just recently coming to light. Scientists have finally been given access to explore this uncharted world. Along with new species, a unique insight into ancient times is also about to be unfurled.